Hi, this is Keena Kim with PivotalDiscovery.com, and we're at the Master's Conference with Eric Sagerbrook, who is the Regional Director of Electronic Discovery at Recommind. And he's going to share some of his thoughts on uh, unstructured data and how people are managing that data. Eric, thanks for joining us. Hi, Keena. Thanks for having me, and hello. Uh, there's some interesting things that are being done with unstructured data, and so regardless of what tools or platforms are being applied, there's some interesting best practices that people are applying and things that, that have been in the forefront that are now finally actually taking place. Uh -huh. And so for corporations behind the firewall, some of the things that they're being able to do now, which is becoming a best practice, which is saving them a great deal of time, money, and, uh, and downstream costs, is to be able to actually go out to custodian data on the network and to get a preview of that data. So mm -hmm. just like you get a preview of any kind of data uh, by being able to have an index of that data, what some people are doing behind the corporate firewall now is if they have 100 custodians that are at the forefront of a case, they're going out and saying, okay, of these 100 custodians, which are the ones that actually really have data? Mm -hmm. So some of the nice things about that is they don't have to rely on the custodians. Of course, people still go and do inter interviews with custodians and ask them where their data is and learn about where they store their data and those kinds of things. But what the lawyers can do now, which they weren't able to do before, is to go and using Google type of searches, go through that data and actually identify from the 100 custodians which are the ones that actually even know anything about this particular matter. Mm -hmm. So what that means, if you only end up collecting data from 80, 75 of those 100 people, all the costs associated with downstream review, of course, go away for the 20, 25 people that you didn't even need to collect from in the first place. So that's kind of one interesting new development which is happening on the left side of the e-discovery reference model, sort of behind the corporate firewall where people are trying to get control of their costs. Mm -hmm. And um, similar to that, what's happening in the law firm side is when people are taking that collected data, there's mm -hmm. some new ways that people are attacking the problem of reviewing the huge volumes of data that now exist. What they're doing is they're using the documents that are being extracted based on the meaning of the documents. And there's lots of different people that have been trying to do it different ways. And what's new, though, is that these technologies are now actually starting to get utilized in ways that weren't done before. And one of the things that's unique about the way this is being approached now versus before, it used to be the documents would get categorized by auto categorization engines and whatever the product was, it would put them into categories and that's where the document would be, it would be in one category. But data can be about multiple things and of course you can have ideas like you can have Java the coffee, Java the island, Java the programming language, mm -hmm. and sometimes keywords, for example, in those kinds of situations don't necessarily um, benefit or move the process along in a cost-effective and efficient, fast manner. Right. So with these technologies, what happens is the documents that are actually chosen by users are actually the ones now that the engines can go out and find more like. Mm -hmm. And so the intelligence of the users who make the actual calls as to what category a document belongs in or whether a document is responsive, that is a new way of doing the workflow so that the documents that are found uh, are tend to be much more likely to be responsive, they're found faster, the lawyers have much more insight and information quicker, mm -hmm. and the stuff that is junk similarly can be put to the side and put as non-responsive data much faster, and the volumes of data can be gone through very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so the metrics of, of, in the days of when I was in uh, doing large cases uh, of having war rooms essentially, or entire floors of law firms filled with coders, are going away to where a coder can now be as productive as five coders previously. And so that is a huge shift. And as those technologies and best practices are catching on, that's going to be one way that we sort of solve this problem of the continuing exponential growth of data. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us today, Eric. Thank you very much.